it's time to set up a new bullet journal and I am super excited as per usual, maybe a little too excited. I did end up staying up till about 5.30 a.m. working on this, but that is fine because I am super chuffed with how it turned out. It probably didn't help that I started working on it at like 11.30 p.m., but that's details. <laughs> When starting a new bullet journal, I actually don't mind taking a little bit of extra time on it. I don't mind if it takes me a while because I want to put the effort in up front to set up spreads that I like and thus will actually use. The first layout we're starting with is a cover page for 2023, which is the year that this bullet journal is going to serve. And from the pencil sketches, you can probably kind of see what we're going for here. If it looks familiar, yes, this is the same theme that I used for my October setup. And I'm kind of thinking that with each New Year bullet journal, I might just make it a tradition or something that I use my favorite theme for the year in setting up those pages, if that makes sense. In 2022, for my start of journal setup, I went with a pegboard theme, which was certainly one of my favorites from the year prior. So maybe this could be just like my thing or something. If this is the first time you're watching a video from me though, hello, I am Jess or Jashi Karin. In my videos, I like to share a wide variety of layout ideas and tips that you can use to help build a planning system that works for you. On this cover page though, to start off, I've gone in with the 01 Micron pen to do the black line work on our decoration. The main decorative elements that I'm using in this setup are the Wheel of the Year inspired design and also some doodles of ribbons. Both of these are actually more straightforward than they probably look. They end up looking very visually effective, but the actual process is fairly easy. It's not fast, but once you know what you're doing, it's fairly straightforward. But even then, it's still not fast. <laughs> As said though, because this is my start of journal setup, I don't mind spending a little extra time on it. Here I'm using an Artline Calligraphy pen just to color in the inside edge of that border. It doesn't need to be this tool in particular if you're doing something similar. I more picked it because it was a handy black pen and it has a nice chisel tip that lets me color in a wide area easily. I'm notoriously bad at typically picking the wrong tool for the job, like trying to color in a full page in black with an 0.1 pen or something ridiculous like that. This time I didn't do that. I'm pretty sure that counts as personal growth. This is just so when I start putting washi tape on the inside of that circle design, I don't have to cut it super close to the border, which could be kind of tricky because the border doesn't have a smooth edge. So just having that black underneath gives me a little bit of a buffer. Speaking of smooth borders, one of the things that I did to tie all of the pages of this layout together was do a simple monoline border with these reversed rounded edges. To do those corners in particular, I'm just using my circle stencil from Stettler, which is a super handy tool. It makes doing circles way easier, comes with a bunch of different sizes. It just means that you get circles that are actually circles and not circular-esque amorphous blobs, which is kind of what my freehand circles look like. So yes, very highly would recommend this tool. It's worth mentioning that all of the equipment I'm using in this setup is linked in the description box below. I'm a big believer in the idea of repeated elements make a theme more cohesive. So another element that I used in all of the pages of this setup were repeated fonts. I have two lettering styles in particular that I'm making use of, one of them just being a simple serif font and one of them being a kind of more witchy inspired one. Any headers on the pages though were written with the 08 micron pen. So a pen with a little bit more weight just to make those headers stand out. Time to fill in that wheel of the year design and for this we're going to be using washi tape. This washi tape comes from the washi tape shop and it's absolutely gorgeous. We're effectively using this to color the wheel in, but the nice part is that because it's washi tape you can have decorative filling in without a lot of effort. I say without a lot of effort, but actually trimming the washi tape to fit in the wheel was a bit of a struggle, especially because it does have a darker background. If I was using a washi tape that was a little bit more transparent, I'd be able to see my line work underneath it and that would have made it a little easier. But I really love the contrast of the black and the gold elements on the washi tape. So the struggle was worth it. Making my layouts look nice is something that's really important to me because I don't use layouts that I don't like the look of. And there's absolutely no point in setting up a bunch of layouts that you either don't fill in or you never go back to to actually utilize. That would make for an unsuccessful yearly setup, at least in my opinion. 
On the right hand side of this spread though, as the header suggests, this is going to be a place for my word of the year. This is something that I've done since 2018, just picking one or sometimes two words to effectively act as a theme for the year. Sometimes having the word of the year doesn't really change a lot, and some years it's made a measurable difference. For instance, my word of the year for 2022 was jump. I was kind of tossing up between jump and leap, but I don't know, leap just sounded more pretentious. I don't know why. <laughs> no offense to anybody who picked leap as their word, but I picked the word jump mainly because I wanted to take the jump or take the leap out of teaching. So leave my teaching job to pursue content creating full time, which is something that I did end up doing. Having that set up as my theme for the year though had really helped me keep that in mind. So when it came to my decision making process for the year, I could come back to that word and remember what my intentions were. It's less about the idea of manifesting and more using it as kind of like a guiding principle. Previous words of the year that I've had have been balance, improve, consistency, diligence, and I'm not sure what my word of the year for 2023 is going to be at this stage, but on this page I'll put down things like the definition of the word, some journaling about why I decided to pick it, and possibly also some goals or actions that relate to that word. So for instance, if your word of the year was community, what kind of goals do you actually have related to community? What kind of goals do you have to build your community or make new connections? That kind of stuff. Here though you can see we're finishing off that wheel of the year design by just sticking in a little post-it note into the very center. Originally I was going to use my moon sticky notes, but I left them at my friend's house, so when I came to do this setup I didn't actually have them available. So instead I decided to opt in for these purple ones. I think they're supposed to be Pluto, honestly I just picked them because they're purple and I like purple. But this also gave us an additional color to play with when it came to the color scheme or color palette for the setup. Although I don't use any additional purple on this page, I do use it in some of the pages still to come. The final touch on this one is adding in some gold paint. Now I don't paint a lot in my bullet journal, mainly because I don't really consider myself a painter. I don't have the mad skills when it comes to things like watercolor or gouache, or I mean, completely honest, I don't know what gouache is. But anyways, the gold paint we're adding in here is just to add some touches to the wheel design and also a couple of little elements on the border. So some little dots at the top and bottom of the page, and then on the right hand side we also have a little cross that kind of looks like a star. In terms of timing, from first touch of the pen to final erasings, this spread came in at about 51 minutes, but as always that doesn't include idea generation time or sketching in time. Flipping over though, and we are on to my 101 things list. Now you may be wondering, Jess, this is a new journal setup, where's your future log? You may also have had questions of why didn't we start on the nameplate page and haven't I seen this journal before? That's because this 2023 setup is actually in my yearly collections journal. This is a journal I started for 2022 to avoid the issue of having to transfer yearly collections when I move into a new journal. If you're like me then you may go through multiple journals in a year and having to transfer yearly collections from one to the next is its just a hassle I don't need. So what I do instead is put my yearly collections, or anything that I want to last for a full year, or collect a full year's worth of information, I put those in here, into this yearly collections journal. The future log is something that I'll put in what I call my everyday journal, and my everyday journals last somewhere between three to six months. Those ones are mainly for my planning and weekly daily task doing, that kind of stuff. I of course will have a setup video for that one too, so make sure to stay tuned for that. The 101 things list though is something that I've been doing for a while now, and it is effectively what it sounds like, 101 things that I want to do. This is a mix of little things, big things, fun things, life admin things. It's effectively kind of like a goals list. When setting up this list it is very important to have a mix of different things, so don't just make it like 101 big ticket items because you'll get to the end of the year and maybe have completed a handful. I don't want that for myself, so I keep little things on here too. Things like try taro flavoured bubble tea, or celebrate my birthday. Some things are things that are just going to happen anyways, but I do try to make it so that it's a way to bring a little bit more fun into my life. You may also have heard of a version of this called 101 in 1001, so 101 things in 1001 days. I kind of like it being year bound, I just feel the maths on that is a little bit easier. And I also don't put too much pressure on myself to do every single thing on the list. It's more so just a go-to place to see the things that I want to do eventually. 
This also means that at the end of the year, I can review any of the open tasks or ones that haven't been done and then see if I actually still want to do them. So maybe I'll get to the end of the year and decide some of those tasks aren't really for me anymore, so I won't put them on my next iteration of the 101 things list. As you can see though, this layout includes a Dutch door so that I can have my 101 things spread out across four pages while only having to put the header in once. As the header is decorative, only having to do it once is something that I very much appreciate. In the section at the bottom, I have enough space to list out 25 things per page, though the last page will have 26. There's also a row to put a header bar in and then space for the washi tape. This meant that in the A5 Archer and Olive notebook that I'm using, I cut off the top eight rows of the dot grid. If you are making a Dutch door in your journal, do of course be careful. We don't wanna accidentally cut away too much of the page and then compromise the structural integrity of the notebook. But if you were looking to try your hand at Dutch doors, I do have some separate videos that could help you out. Those ones, along with any other videos related to this one, can be found linked in the description box below. On the 101 things list here though, I'm just adding in the headers and the numbers for each of the tasks using a Stettler Triplus Fineliner. One thing that I've changed on this list compared to last year is putting in a space to write the date that the task was completed. I also moved the tick box to be on the left hand side of the task rather than the right, which was realistically something I wanted to have on my list for 2022, but I accidentally didn't put it in and ended up having to have those boxes on the right, which wasn't as user friendly. I'm not populating my 101 things list in this video. We're gonna do that in a future one, but flipping over now and we're getting into my 2323s in 2023. I don't know why, I just find that really satisfying to say. The idea behind this list is that I'm picking 23 things that I wanna do 23 times in the year of 2023. If you were going to do a similar list, I do encourage you to think about the kind of things that you could do 23 times. Though this is another example of something that I don't put a lot of pressure on myself to fully complete. For instance, one of my 2222s in 2022 was to read 22 books. This is coming off a year where I read like two books total. Admittedly, this year it has encouraged me to read more, so I think I'm up to about 10 or 12 books so far, but I'm not going to put undue pressure on myself to finish off the full 22 this year. You'll note that I haven't put books on my list for next year because there were some other things that I wanted to include. So my full list of things are 23 movies watched, 23 TV show seasons watched, I think watching 23 full TV shows would be a little excessive, 23 new artists listened to in terms of music, 23 podcast episodes, games played, meat-free dinners, 23 new foods tried, social gatherings, dates, just for fun or long-term collection layouts in my journal, cricket projects, hair masks, face masks, 23 20-minute workouts, days where I drink one liter of water, someday maybe tasks done, we'll talk more about that later, work-free days, live streams, 23 bonus videos, 23 collaborations, 23 products in my shop, 23 shop sales, and 23 lots of $100 saved. On the first page, I have a box to put in a graph so that I can track my progress in each of those 23 things. And then on the subsequent pages, I have places to write out what those things are. So for my 23 movies, what movies did I actually watch? For some of the 23 things, I wanna record a bit more information. So for example, in the movie section, I wanna write out the movie titles. Whereas others, I really just wanna include the date that the thing happened. So for instance, which days of the year were my one liter of water days? For the ones that I wanna include the larger amounts of information, those ones take up the full width of the page. But for the ones where I just wanna record the dates, I can fit two of those across the page. In terms of timing, from first touch of the pen to final erasings, the 2323s and 2023 pages took approximately 1 hour and 10 minutes, and the 101 things list from before took approximately 40. On the back page of this collection though, I have another one of those decorative wheel designs. But flipping over, and the next pages I'm setting up are a place to write in what my book club books for the year are, and a place to track my yearly challenge. In terms of my challenge for next year, I'm going to be trying my hand at a no spend challenge. I haven't worked out the rules for what such a challenge is going to look like for me, because it won't include things like bills and fuel costs and stuff like that. And that's not to say that I don't expect to spend money next year, it's more so I just want to be more mindful about my spending. In previous years, I have set up spending trackers where I just looked at how much I spent in each day. So coloring in each day on a similar style tracker, just using a different color to represent how much was spent. 
but I wanted to make this one super simple, so I just have two colours. Grey for no spend, and black for yes spend. As said, I do need to set up the rules for what a no spend versus a yes spend looks like, because it's not going to include all categories. It's more like, did I spend on something I didn't necessarily need to, versus did I not spend on things I didn't need to? In terms of the tracker itself, it probably looks a little bit strange if you haven't come across one of these before. Typically they're called things like a year in pixels, and people normally use them to track their moods across the year. But effectively we have a column of boxes for each of the months of the year, so January being 31 spaces long, February being 28 spaces long, March being 31 spaces long, etc. Which is why the end of the box ends up with a kind of jagged, wonky line. This just means that you have one dark red box for each of the days of the year that you can go and put that colour in to represent the spending. On the left hand side though, this is where my book club books are going. So this year my friend Rachel and I started our own book club, we call it the J&R book club. So J for Jess and R for Rachel. That one is run through our community discord, to which there is a link in the description box as well. In each of those boxes though, I'm just going to write down the title and author of the book, and also possibly a note of why it was chosen. For instance, this year our book club books were based on genres, so a different genre each month. We haven't quite decided on the format for next year at this stage, but we've got a little bit of time and I'm excited to get into it. Don't mind me just writing my letters upside down here. I needed something for my hand to rest on and because I'm right handed this was just easier for me to do. I could of course have got something to prop my hand up, but I didn't do that. This meant that I did end up making a slight mistake or putting a line a little lower than I had wanted to on that first L, but that is totally fine because we can fix mistakes. In fact, I've got a video of 18 ways we can fix mistakes. But in this case, I just used a white gel pen to go over that extra line that I didn't want. This full spread took about 23 minutes though. I like to include the times just so you can see how long these things actually take, because it's a little hard to tell with the time lapsing. But now we're on to what I'm calling my routines layout. Originally this layout was just going to be dedicated to chores or things that I want to do around the house, but I know that if that's the only information held on this page, I'm not going to come back to it. So I am going to have to put in some fun routines as well to just incentivize myself to actually use the page. I don't write a routines header on this one, instead I'm putting in a quote which is We are what we repeatedly do by Will Durant. This is one of my favourite quotes because it just helps remind me that a lot of the things that we want to accomplish in our life are built up by small things that we do over and over again. Small steps, big progress, that kind of thing. This layout has two main sections though, so on the left we have a place for all of my monthly tasks, or things that I want to do once per month, and on the right are the spaces for my weekly tasks, so the things I want to do once a week. I have enough space for 8 weekly actions and 31 monthly actions, that's not to say that I'm actually going to fill all of the monthly actions up, and I also might include tasks that aren't once per month, maybe once every 2 months, but I'm thinking of putting things like my monthly reset process on here, monthly chores, weekly chores, weekly reset tasks, etc. The most painful part of this setup was writing out the numbers 1 through 52 8 times over for the weekly section, but in terms of timing the spread took about 21 minutes to set up. Flipping over though and we are on to my future me problems. As you can see I already have some washi tape and a dutch door cut out of this one. This was just done in the same way that we had the 101 things list. My future me problems, or someday maybe list, is a list of things that I want to do eventually, but don't necessarily want to do today, or this week, or even this month. Previously I used to put this list in my everyday bullet journal, but I was finding that a lot of the things weren't getting done throughout the life of those everyday journals, and then I just have to transfer all of them to the next one. Considering that the entire point of this yearly collections journal is so that I don't have to transfer things, I figured it would be much better suited to being in here. That means I have an entire year to action those tasks, or future me problems, before migrating them, or scrapping them, come the end of the year. Examples of things that I'd put on a list like this could be swatching out my pens by colour. They're things that I want to do, but they don't need to be done right this second. After 14 minutes though, the future me problems list is set up, and we can flip on over to my then and again page, and a word from me. You can see I've already stuck in our little purple planet here for our decorative part. And we're going to stick another element on the top of that right hand page, which is a little envelope that I made out of Archer and Olive blackout paper. To do this I just measured up the space that I wanted the little envelope to be in, and then cut the paper a little wider on each of the left, right and bottom sides. That way I could fold those sections under and stick them to the page with double sided tape. 
making that little envelope or pocket. I also put some washi tape at the top of the envelope just to make it look a little bit decorative. As you can see here, the little envelope is gonna be a place for me to store a letter to myself. At the start of each new year, I like to write a letter to myself to open at the end of the year. So at the start of January this year, I wrote myself a letter for December 31st Jess to open. And I'm gonna do the same thing next year. It's kind of nice just to write myself some little words of encouragement, outline what kind of hopes or aspirations that I had for the year. So then at the end of the year, I can reflect on, did I actually make past Jess proud? Did her hopes for the year come true? That kind of stuff. The then and again page that we have on the left is one that I used to call then and now, but effectively this is another one that's related to start of year and end of year me. Down the middle of that page, I have some very short journaling prompts that I can answer on the left at the start of the year or the 1st of January, and then answer again on the right at the end of the year or the 31st of December. This is just a nice, really super simple snapshot of how I've changed across that year. The prompts that I've used on this one are a current goal, my current savings amount, my current food obsession, a movie that I enjoyed recently, my current song obsession, a TV show that I've recently enjoyed, a game that, well, it's supposed to say a game I enjoyed, but I put the N before the E in enjoyed, so it says nejoyed. <laughs> I know what I meant, it's fine. A book that I read recently, a word or phrase that I'm using a lot, something that I recently tried, something that I'm feeling accomplished about, my current biggest life problem, something that I wanna try, something that I'm nervous about, something that I learned recently, and something that I'm looking forward to. These are of course just ideas of prompts that you could use, but I like to keep them really simple, answered in like a sentence or just a couple of words. Though if you wanted to do a page like this that was a little bit more in detail, instead of having those prompts in the middle, you could just have two columns for regular journaling. If you're getting value from the ideas we have in this video though, do consider subscribing. We have heaps of idea videos coming up that you will not want to miss, and I would love to have you as part of the team. If you're feeling a little nervous about starting your journal for next year, just know that you are not alone. And if it makes you feel any better, I have at least three mistakes in this setup that I didn't actually catch or notice until after I was filming. I wonder if you noticed them. But despite those mistakes, I think that the pages still come together really well. If you are feeling nervous though, whether it's you're setting up your first journal or like me, it's something like your 16th, start with pencil first, sketch everything in so that you know the placement is where you want it to be, things are the right shapes and sizes. Take your time with it, have fun, and remember that even if mistakes happen, there are pretty much always ways to fix them. I'm not gonna lie, I am very pumped to start populating and using these layouts. My 101 things list in particular, I am super excited about, but I probably need to let us get a little bit closer to the end of the year before I actually start writing things in. I wanted to make this video earlier for you, so if you wanted to use any of these layouts as inspiration, you could. If you do end up recreating or using any of these layouts as inspiration, be sure to tag me at jashikurin on YouTube, Instagram, or wherever else so that I can check them out. My 2023 yearly collections are looking good, but what does my everyday bullet journal setup look like? You can check out another one of my bullet journal setups in this video at the top, or if you want lots of new bullet journal inspiration, then the playlist at the bottom is where it's at. I'll see you there.